Yeah, yeah, it's another great question. I was actually doing a resume breakdown session with a couple of people today, and we were just talking about this. Like, what are some of the things I've seen since I've done this work for years? Man, that's, that's a lot. I think the first thing I would say, and this is, a lot of people agree with me with this, and some people don't. I think, and I actually put a LinkedIn post out about this some time ago, but anything from a technical skill standpoint, we're talking about technical skills. Anything from a technical skill standpoint, that you put on your resume is fair game for questioning and can and will be assessed. So when we're talking about technical mm. skill, you're, you gotta be, you, I see a lot of people, they're not very completely honest about the technical skills they have. This doesn't apply to everybody, but I've seen people that if they just did it a little bit, like they just did it a little bit and they'll put it on there, they'll put that, they got Python right or if they like have some knowledge they just know about it they'll put it down as a skill but when you get in an interview with a technical recruiter because in the tech space they take technical skills very seriously like if you're big tech small tech small startups you're going to be assessed on your skills be ready to talk about that and i see a lot of people they get advice where the people just tell them to put these skills on your resume so you can get seen by the recruiter but I think that's a that's not that's problematic for me because if you have here, okay, you done you, you Python, okay, great. Can you speak to that? They can't speak to it. Is Python a front end code or back end? It's back end, right? They don't know mm. that. You know what I mean? So it's like really only put things on your on, in the skill section that you're truly skilled at. A skill is something that anytime, anywhere, day or night, they put it in front of you and you can do it with minimum to zero supervision and you can do it at least at a moderate level that's a skill right so that's something to like that's something that i see a lot of people do right you have all the buzzwords but when they get on the phone with a technical recruiter they get on the phone with the hiring manager they can't speak to it so i always challenge people to really think about your skill section on your resume are you and just gut check yourself or am i truly skilled at this if i take if you send me assessment test right now Right, on well, pen testing using Kali Linux. Can I do it? And can I do it? Do I if, if I gotta have somebody looking over my shoulder, somebody guiding me, and I can't do it by myself at a moderate level, you might want to go back to the drawing board with putting that on your resume as a skill. And I think that's a big mistake people make, right? Because hiring managers get excited, recruiters like me get excited. Oh man, they know AWS Cloud. Oh man, they know data structures and algorithms but they bomb when they get to the mm. interview. So I want to set people up for success, right? So I want you to do well in these. So that's the, that's one thing I see. The second thing I see is when they get into interviews and not, they don't, they're not able to tell a story about their career and what they've done, right? So if you've done something for three years, seven years, 11 years, you should be able to talk about that. I've seen too many times where, you know, some candidates, they don't know, they don't know their resume and they can't really speak to projects they've done without picking it up and looking at it. It shows that you don't really know about it or you're not passionate about it. So I always say, be ready to talk about things that you put in your experience section. If you, read, if you had it on here that you ran a project and you did a project and it saved this time and this money, that's, they're going to want to know how you did it. So be ready to talk about it. Typically, this happens in the STAR method. They use a STAR method, and I'm pretty sure you may have heard of this. They use the STAR method, right? So situation and all of that, that situation, task, action, re result. I'll even add an extra R and say reflection. Yeah, now there's two R's. <laughs> yeah. And you got to be able to really tell the story about it. So I think that's one common thing that I noticed that people do. And... I think those are really the two key things. There's other things, but those are really the key two.